as always, to a Wednesday edition of Double Jab Boxing Podcast, powered by the Atlantic City Boxing Hall of Fame, and coming at you live via TriX 57 inside the TriX57.com studios. Rich Kinnear is alongside my broadcast partner, co-host, as always, Rob Scott. Great show uh, this evening. we got a ton of boxing, as we do each and every Wednesday, to break down, to preview. We've got GGG Jacobs. We've got a nice little um, heavyweight affair this weekend, Mansoor and Kaufman. we got to get our thoughts and because of last week, uh, we weren't on Thurman and Garcia. Joe Pasquale is going to join us. He had an opportunity, uh, obviously, to be a part of that fight. So we'll talk about uh, that a little bit with him as far as his career being one of the best in the business. He's a great he's a great get because he's got so many great stories, and we know he's a movie buff as well. So we'll uh, have a little fun with him. Hoping to hear from Leo Brancato, uh, known as Colojo from a <laughs> Bronx tale, and uh, doing some good things, getting his career back on track. And he's also a, a diehard boxing fan. But I'll tell you, we, we weren't on last week, so right away, first, um, before we kind of get into the meat and potatoes, your initial thoughts, reaction on Thurman and Garcia. On this very set, I told you, I thought Keith Thurman was going to find a way to edge Danny Garcia. In your estimation, was it more of Thurman or what Danny Garcia didn't do in that fight? And quite honestly, since you asked it that way, I would have to say it's, it's more along the lines of um, uh, what Danny didn't do. I, I, that's my personal opinion. I think that I don't think that Keith Thurman, you know, proved himself to be head and shoulders better than uh, Garcia. I just think that he did enough that on that particular night. He fought with enough urgency that he basically. Uh, how the old cliche go, who, you know, whoever wants it more. He wanted it more than uh, Garcia did. Garcia started coming on at the, at the end, but at the same time, you know, you, you don't let a fight um, get away from you like he, uh, like he let it get away I from. thought also early on in that, he started to bank some rounds at Keith, and it, it's, it was a situation, in my eyes, where he was mixing in the jab, you saw some of the power shots, he was moving around, so not only was he accumulating rounds, but you saw a little bit of the ring generalship. Then you saw Danny start to make some adjustments. Now, he was able to catch Keith with those body shots that left, but it was more or less, it was peck, peck move, and that was it. You know, it was just one, one, boom. It, there were really not a, com a lot of combinations, and I'll tell you, you got the feeling when he went to his corner late in the fight, he was dejected, Angel Garcia knew it, and ultimately, you had to tell him, listen, you're behind on the scorecard. You've got to go for that knockout. Now, I had no issue with Thurman taking his foot off the gas pedal, and I argued this for two weeks now. When Mayweather does it, he's a great uh, uh, defensive fighter, and he's just winning the fight. When Thurman does it, he's not giving the people their money. No, that's what championship rounds, he had to fight in the bag. Why not? I don't have an issue with it. Well, when, when you made the comparison between Thurman and, and Mayweather, like I said, I don't think that Thurman basically proved Herself to be head and shoulders better than Garcia, where Mayweather usually, when he takes his uh, foot off the pedal, he already proved his supremacy. Uh, I, agree. I, I, I agree with you on that. You yes. know, and, and I don't think that um, Thurman did prove his his, um, his you know his basic superiority. That he's over the best at 147. Yeah, oh, and the best in that ring that night. He was the best in the ring for that night. But I don't think that, you know, if if a but bottom line is this: if a rematch takes place, who's going to be the who's going to be the victor? or who's going to be the, um, the, the odds-on favorite. Um, I don't think that – I mean, Thurman may be the odds-on favorite, but he won't uh, – he'll be the favorite, but he won't be this head-and-shoulders um, favorite because um, he didn't – I don't think that he did anything to prove it. If anything, what it, what it did impress me about him is the fact of uh, – I think what, what a lot of fighters don't understand is this, and that is, you know, every fight in your career is an important fight. Right. Uh, but – you fight for fights like this, and when you get a fight like this, you you I guess you have to fight with a certain bit of urgency, and, and it was an urgency that Thurman fought from round one, from bell one and round one, where Garcia had to had play catch up. That was the the impressive thing that Thurman did. That Thurman uh, basically he knew that he been fighting all this time for notoriety to, to be considered the best in the welterweight division, and his opportunity came, and he from round one tried to you know basically put his stamp on that he is the best in the welterweight division. I, I don't think, I mean, I don't think Angel Garcia's comments and his behavior uh, leading up to the fight were that big of a distraction. You know, to come out afterwards and say you had such a major issue, I had no issue whatsoever. Um, you know, I scored it the way the judges saw it um, in favor of Keith Thurman. To say that Danny's going to retire, it just comes off as sour grapes. Listen, uh, his son needed to make certain adjustments. He needed to actually let his hands go midway through in that fight, and he didn't. Now, you talk about Spence, you got Brooke, you got 
Freddie Roach coming out saying, listen, Manny Pacquiao would destroy, he would knock out Thurman, he would knock out Garcia. Uh, you know, it's amazing. Thurman wins, you know, uh, unifies the belt, and yet people are still looking at him as like, well, he's still not the best at 147. And he, di he didn't give you that great, great effort, but he came away with the win. Well, I mean, because the, the, the welterweight division is so packed right now. So, you know, uh, how we always say that uh, a fight is only good as his last fight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. His last fight, he beat Garcia, and he proved that, you know, for that night that he's better than Garcia. But uh, Spence and Brooke has a, have a fight coming up, and who's to say how their performance is going to come out? Yeah. And when they when they do fight, and especially if one of those get guys get a knockout, I'm pretty sure that they're going to leapfrog Keith Thurman. So, you know what I mean? So, so like I said, Keith Thurman, you're only as good as your last fight right now. Let's consider him the best um, Walter Waite in the world. But after Brooks and Spence's fight, that may change. A couple of minutes past the 7 o'clock hour Eastern time. Again, we are coming at you live inside the Triax 57 studios. This is Double Jab Boxing Podcast, powered by the Atlantic City Boxing Hall of Fame, where boxing comes to life. Check them out online, acbhof.com. Don't forget the inaugural ceremony and the weekend, Memorial Day weekend in May. It's pretty much right around the corner. Uh, so you'll get a chance not only uh, to enjoy the festivities the weekend, you've got uh, the city's going to plan to do a parade. You'll, you'll be able to meet and greet with a lot of these fighters. Uh, we'll certainly be out there, but it's kind of like a who's who. You'll have the Box Fan Expo as well. You can actually go on the website right now. You can buy tickets now. You can also reserve your room and tickets as well. Um, so we got a couple minutes to play with before we take it into the first break. So we talked about that at 147. Uh, throughout the show, we'll get your thoughts on uh, Danny Jacobs and GGG. It's, it's, a, it's a good fight in this regard. Well, first of all, I, I won't pay. I'm sorry. I'm not paying to watch this fight. That's just my opinion. Uh, the, the PPV. I, I, I'm just, to me, uh, it's just, it's not a fight that's sexy enough for me to shell out. Now, I say that, and most likely, uh, look, I'll have an opportunity to watch it regardless because it comes with the job and everything, but it's not that fight that you get a you get a PBC card, free TV, and look what we saw two weeks ago with Thurman and Garcia. To me, GGG, we already know what he's bringing to the table, and Jacobs, we already know it, it doesn't warrant pay-per-view in my eyes. Well, uh, well, put it this way. It's not so much it doesn't warrant pay-per-view. I just think that, you know, with the prices of pay-per-view, you're going up to $60 or that have you for a fight um you know there may be some argument and say that it's not worth that much but at the same time i do think that is it is a, a, a decent well a middleweight championship fight and triple g always puts on a performance he I mean, does and i have worked um a few of uh, the promotions that he's had and uh you know he's never left anybody you know Unsatisfied. No, of course not, because he's a pressure fighter, and he comes he comes straight forward. He'll give, he'll take, and he's always looking for the knockout. And people suspect it might be an early night. I'm not I'm not going to go that route. Uh, we'll break it down in a little bit. Uh, Ten past seven o'clock hour, just getting warmed up on a Wednesday edition of Double Job Boxing Podcast. Don't forget, follow Rob Scott and myself on Facebook, as well as Twitter, as well as Triax 5070 Atlantic City Boxing Hall of Fame. We'll take a timeout when we come back on the other side. Joe Pasquale will join us for a couple moments. We'll talk about his career, some boxing stories as well, and Atlantic City back in its heyday. And interesting enough, you know, his career was almost sidetracked. I mean, he had an opportunity many, many moons ago, and he almost blew that shot. We'll figure out exactly what went wrong <laughs> with Joe on the other side as we're just getting warmed up on a Wednesday edition of Double Job Boxing Podcast. Again, powered by the Atlantic City Boxing Hall of Fame, and of course, coming at you live exclusively on triax57.com.